Pray for the Devil is a brand new horror exorcism film that just hit theaters this week. It tells the story of a woman named Annie who's a nun, and when she was a young child, she dealt with trauma from an abusive parent, specifically her mother. Except she's under the impression that that reason was because her mother was actually possessed by a demon. Years later, when she's just living her life as a nun, she comes across a young girl who's also possessed, and it turns out she's possessed by the very same demon that possessed her mother years before. Is this movie worth your time this Halloween season? Stick around and find out. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to be talking about Pray for the Devil. Directed by Daniel Stamm and starring people like Jacqueline Byers and Colin Salmon as well as Christian Navarro and many others, Pray for the Devil is a brand new exorcism horror film hitting theaters this week and I have my review for it right now. So going into this movie, I was actually pretty intrigued because the trailers really just called me in. It seemed like it easily could have been one of the better or at least a standout horror film of this Halloween season. And unfortunately, I have to tell you that I thought the movie was just okay and that it was just kind of another run of the mill exorcism horror film. We've seen so many of these and for anybody who's well versed in exorcism films or anything that has to do with the paranormal, supernatural, ghosts, demons in the house kind of thing, You've seen this movie a million times over. Uh, this movie recycles so much that you come to expect from the genre when it comes to just technical elements in terms of how the camera moves, certain jump scares, certain sound effects, and just certain cliche story elements that ultimately leave you feeling underwhelmed as an audience member. And maybe I feel a little bit extra underwhelmed with this one because I went into it kind of looking forward to it, even though I had started to hear some, you know, middle of the road things about it. But yeah, I definitely have to join join the group of individuals saying that this is at the end of the day a, a middle of the road horror film there isn't really much to it that i found to be overly great per se uh, but that's not to say that i thought the film was bad i, I do want to praise some elements for sure and i think the key element here to praise uh, is our lead role annie played by jacqueline byers who i thought was was really great in the role i really enjoyed her character and kind of seeing her character grow over the course of the film however I do have some issues with the script and how I don't feel like the characters were able to really grow all that much because of the way that they choose to tell the story here. But I did find that Jacqueline Byers gave a really strong lead performance and she's definitely what kept me engaged throughout the entirety of the runtime. I already touched on what this movie is all about at the very beginning, but the base premise for anybody who skipped past that intro is that you have this nun named Annie who she wants to get into exorcisms because when she was a young girl, she was actually abused by her mother, but she's under the impression that her mom was not just some abusive woman, but instead was possessed and that there was some other entity there. She talks about the fact that her mother was so loving and so caring, but suddenly would kind of flip on a dime and there was something else taking control there. And then all these years later, when she's treating a young girl who has been possessed, uh, it turns out that it's the exact same demon and that demon has been coming after Annie this entire time. That premise in and of itself got me really engaged and I was definitely curious to see where they would go with it. And, and it just disappoints me to say that over the course of the movie, because of the structure of the story, the pacing of the story and the script overall, uh, I found myself just wildly underwhelmed. This is a movie that develops our main character and specifically just through a lot of flashbacks and exposition rather than her really being able to grow throughout the course of the film. Of course, you need the backstory of her having been traumatized by her abusive mother and the whole demon possession element to really establish the narrative here. But as the movie progressed, I found myself feeling like they just kept going back to certain parts of her childhood or starting to unravel things through more flashbacks or exposition to really develop her character rather than there actually being events that are developing her over the course of the film. Beyond that, you have a bunch of different individuals who are working in the hospital, whether they're priests or they're clergymen or other nuns, but ultimately none of 
of them really serve a super strong purpose in the narrative other than kind of being somebody to scold her, teach her something, or take her somewhere to see something that she needs to see in order for her to act upon that. Ultimately, I never really found myself too ingrained or too captivated by any of the characters or the other performances. That's not to say the performances were bad, but I think a lot of it just comes down to the script. They weren't really given material that really allowed them or their performances to really shine, which ultimately led to them just feeling like another generic character in this movie that just recycles a lot that you've seen in this genre already. And I think another big downfall to this movie is the fact that the trailers showed a lot of the movie. There's a lot of this movie that's in the trailers, including one thing that I'll talk about right here, which I guess you could say is a spoiler, but it's in all of the marketing, all of the trailers. So this is not a spoiler that has not already been revealed. But in the trailer, you do see that Anne herself does become possessed. And I think that that's such a a weak element to the marketing because I kind of was waiting for that the entire movie, you know? I'm not necessarily thinking or saying that it would have been a huge shocker to me had I been watching the movie and it just happened, but at least I wouldn't have expected that the entire time. So while watching the movie, I was just kind of waiting for the scenes and the moments that looked familiar from the trailer where we do see our main character become possessed. Yeah, you know, I found that to be just a, a bit weak, you know, when it comes to really setting up expectations for an audience. Uh, there were a couple of things that I thought were pretty interesting here in the story that are not revealed in the trailer and, you know, I thought were kind of laced in here pretty well, uh, but I feel like everything's just kind of undercut by how generic everything else is. When there is an interesting idea or interesting premise, like the base premise of this film, I just found that it would eventually be undercut by the fact that the film was just littered with more just generic ways to kind of unravel certain things or to take those interesting elements and implement it into the story there wasn't really a lot going on that felt really original unique or different um, this film didn't really feel like it had too much of its own identity i feel like i've seen this specific movie dozens of times before so i guess the real question is is this movie worth your time and i would say if you're a fan of horror if you're a fan of exorcisms films uh, definitely go check it out there's definitely worse movies out there it's not a movie that i feel is bad per se it's just generic and there really isn't too much about it on a character level on a story level on a special effects level or anything like that or even on a horror or scary level that i feel is really worth you running to the theaters to see there's a lot of generic jump scares here. There's some good special effects and some good practical effects. I would say that my biggest praises would be you know, the locations that they use and the costume design, the overall setting. I feel like that really is where the movie really shined. They got a lot of really good looking locations that really added to the atmosphere. But when it comes down to the thing that I think makes a movie the most important, which is the story and the characters, I just found it to be just another run of the mill film in this genre that we've seen before. So See it if you like this kind of stuff, but I don't necessarily know that this is something you need to rush to theaters to see. This is a movie that you can definitely just check out if it hits a horror streaming service like Shudder or something like Netflix or Hulu or something one day. It's not something I would say to go spend your hard-earned money on in theaters, uh, but it's a movie that I'd say is at least worth watching at home if you see it on a streaming service, but nothing to rush out to see right now. So I hope you guys enjoyed my quick rambly review on this. I feel like I started to kind of space out a little bit halfway through this review and my mind started going 15 different directions which does tend to happen and hopefully I was able to save it in editing but I definitely want to hear what you guys have to say did you like this movie did you not like this movie did you find it to be a middle of the road film like myself or did you actually enjoy it more than me or maybe you hated it more than me definitely want to hear what you guys have to say so leave any and all comments down below and I'll see you guys in the next one Bye bye